everyone once again uh, many many thanks to mr tamim said uh, who has been with us for the third time and he will be speaking on nlp neuro linguistic programming and also we have other participant uh, joining from other places like anjum firoz parvez and all that we have and uh, without wasting any time i just wanted to hand over the stage uh, to tamim with many many thanks for conducting the sessions on nlp as such over to you tamim sir thanks sabra for the intro so uh, we've had two sessions earlier where we studied some of the basics and uh, we had discussed an exercise like the autobiography exercise so uh, what abrar and i decided is now let's add some more applications so that more people can use this in daily life uh, and uh, for that i decided the most popular visualizations that uh, most students and professionals would request me about were for easing their tension or stress or some uh, long term problem in the psychology that would prevent them from attaining their peak performance so nlp has solutions for such issues and uh, one of the most popular one is called the fast anxiety relief earlier it was called the fast phobia relief and here we have to design an application where you visualize and come out of a phobia type situation very fast okay and for that everyone will need a different kind of solution so usually we discuss with the candidates what exactly is plaguing them what exactly is holding them back we discover that we investigate the nitty gritty of it and then we design an nlp visualization after which they are quickly able to find relief from that problem and they get on with their life and they don't let that block you know be a big hurdle for their success so uh, some of the common scenarios for this would be like a uh, direct phobia like many people if they they see a insect you know they suddenly have a phobia they see a lizard they get scared and their heart beats fast and they don't perform some people have like claustrophobia where you're in a closed space and they suddenly have an anxiety there may be a fear of crowds there may be a fear of a uh, too much of noise like firecrackers or you know uh, this could this could be a situation where a person has come from experiencing a war or something so every time there's a loud noise they may have an, uh, an anxiety episode and so on and there are other situations where sometime in their childhood they may have been either bullied or someone would have spoken very harsh words to them and that would play on their mind every time they meet someone who reminds them of uh, that episode they will suddenly have a depression or a lack of mood motivation and they'll feel that they're not at their best in some cases i find that a lot of people have stage fright where they are afraid to speak in public and the moment they're forced to do that again a kind of anxiety takes over and they stutter uh, they are at a loss for words and so on see all these things can affect the career can affect performance and it can become a negative feedback loop where each uh, episode of uh, sadness you know builds up and a person will go into a kind of despair so with nlp we can design some fast visualization solutions and quickly pull them out of that uh, uh, negative loop so i would like to uh, uh, ask the participants here do you have a, a kind of pressing block or a situation in your life where you felt that you've underperformed and that is still playing in your mind or you suddenly get upset about something can you please share with us so that we can uh, design a custom solution and if it's not for you it can be for your friend it can be for someone you know and you could you know convey this to them to help them out can you please share um uh, anjum feroz or even abdur you when we, yeah, yeah sometimes sure. when we are uh, going for some presentations or some client meetings and we are okay. not in a mood to speak or we have a, had a bad day with some other uh, uh, instances so that okay. time to overcome that it becomes uh, sometimes difficult okay uh, if you are sick or uh, uh, lousy in the starting of the day then the best way to get out of it is dress up well use a catalyst like yes. a perfume or uh, yes improvise put on our best self and then move yeah. but in the middle of the day sometime it, when it happens and we have uh, had a bad customer and then going on to the next one we feel very bad and there are no words to speak and we uh, miss out uh, what we want to uh, convey okay. that is a hindrance okay very very good share i am very impressed that you shared this it's a common problem it can affect i would say majority of people especially if they are into uh, sales marketing presentations one uh, you can say negative customer uh, can spoil the mood and then what happens is if you go and meet a good customer after that also you will not bring the right energy 
and if that rapo isn't there you may not clinch the deal with someone who otherwise you would have clinched the deal with let's say had you not met the difficult customer before so for this what with with nlp what we will do is uh, first we have to identify like let's say in uh, anjum's case can you describe to us one situation where you met a fantastic customer someone like so great you wish that you just want to hug them you know a great customer who put you with so much comfort at ease who gave you a good contract you just think of them you feel very happy can you share have you met someone like that yes yes there are many people who are very polite they uh, don't uh, point out our mistakes if we miss out something they give us opportunities to rectify it and yes. uh, and they give us time uh, if there is something wrong if the product which we pitch in is not the right product they give us time to go back come with the right solution so those now, people are helpful to us and themselves yeah wonderful now let's say in in this category of positive clients there must have been someone who was extremely generous uh, someone who puts a smile on your face and someone who's given you a very big contract you know someone like that. yes yes so can we yeah, call them sure. like can i call them your client number 1 alpha client yes. can i call them the client yeah. number 1 okay now let's say now i want you to just close your eyes for a moment close your eyes okay. for a moment now imagine that you are in a five star hotel situation okay you are in the lobby can you just imagine like that you can hear that little music you know in the five star hotel lobby that western classical music you are comfortably sitting and you have your best marketing material with you in your in your laptop your briefcase and suddenly i want you to imagine someone is tapping you on your shoulder from the back and you turn and you see it's a client number 1 and the client number 1 is very happy to see you you are happy to see them you shake hands he sits near you and immediately says anjum i need you for this order and he gives you a check of whatever high amount you want to visualize how do you feel when the situation is played it's very positive and uh, you definitely very positive yes yes overcome the my moment fear. you start can help me overcome the moment fear. thinking this itself i could see the smile in your face i'm sure uh, abrar and feroz caught it too so what happens is immediately you went into that positive state this is your visualization for fast removal from any depressing situation next time you meet a client who's dissatisfied or you know uh without your fault itself they're blaming you for something or they demotivate you and all that all you need to do to come out of that situation is once that meeting is over you can do something like this wash your face for a moment or say a prayer have a tea and then sit quietly and get through this visualization that i just told you you are in a five star setting the setting is wonderful you hear the music you have your material and suddenly your client number one is tapping in the back and says hey anjum i need you immediately this is the check give me your best stuff in the smiling way and you see him you smile he sees you you smile you shake hands feel his hand and just come out of that visualization before your next meeting you will go with a positive state every time you feel that you met your client number 1 and then you go to the next meeting your state will be positive no matter what happened in the previous because you are now bringing this memory to your forefront that's what the visualization does and you have to feel this as if it really happened you have to be in that meeting that with your client number 1 it will work to perfection and this will help you in your other meetings too because this positive reinforcement it can help you with your team meetings it will help you in motivating your subordinates like imagine you met your best client and you have the order in hand with a positive way you'll start motivating guys the you, you may need to uh, go with this material you may need to pitch with this uh, client your your body language your speech everything will now pass on to your subordinates that is the power of this nlp visualization so remember to do this you can even note this down so this is your winning visualization to quickly come out of the despairing situation Okay, is it clear, Ranjum? No, sure, Tamim. I'll put it into practice. You have to practice it. In fact, the more you do this, you get better at it. And sometimes, what happens is when the alpha, the alpha client comes, also you, uh, both of you will immediately feel happy at seeing each other because you will bring that smile automatically after these visualizations. Correct? Yes. So, uh, similar to this, can Feroz? Do you have a situation where you want to share where you feel that uh, something can help you come out of a, a block? yeah this this is not for me but for my school going kids uh, actually they are very very talkative uh, they have many friends in school and even in our apartment also uh, yeah. they, even they are
Firoj? Unfamiliar are coming, they are not uh, easy to talk with them or they are not even interacting with them at all uh, at the first stage. Uh, are you saying that your kids are not interacting with the classmates or with kids in the apartment? No, no, no. They, they, are, they, are, they are very interactive in class, but with only familiar uh, fa like uh, kids or familiar people who are in our building or apartment. But if uh, okay. someone are not familiar, some guests are coming to our home, uh, they, they are not uh, interacting uh, well with them. Okay. So you find that they have become very introverted or they get yes, reserved or... I can say that, but uh, for uh, only new or unfamiliar people. Once they okay. got familiar, they are they are then very talkative and very interactive, actually. Okay. This for kids, it's a little tricky, but I'll tell you an NLP visualization that has worked very well for, for grown-ups. It will work for kids if you have to politely put it to them. Okay, You, have to, you can't pressurize kids. So very slowly, you have to uh, help them understand this. You have to ask your children to imagine who is their favorite uncle. Every child has a favorite uncle or a favorite cousin and uh, someone who excites them when you're, when you're visiting, like uh, someone from abroad or someone from another city and uh, you may visit them in the holidays and they visit you in holidays. So do you have someone like that? Yes, yes. I so uh, now if this person comes, they'll immediately jump with joy, hug the person and, you know, we'll be very happy to interact with them. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, what do you have to uh, convince the kids every time someone new comes who you would be very happy if your kids met them and interacted is you have to tell them to first imagine that their favorite uncle is, is visiting they'll automatically get into that enthusiastic state oh our uncle is coming or our cousin is coming and so on they'll be very happy then you have to tell them the person who is visiting is a very close friend of this person their uncle and all that and if you are going to talk to them your uncle is going to be so happy with you. The next time he comes, he's going to bring you X, Y, Z number of gifts, whatever is the favorite uh, chocolate or gift or something for your children. This mm -hmm. trick will help them slowly start warming up. Instead of in, Maybe immediately they may not interact well, but the thought of interacting will be seeded into their head. And in a couple of two or three more tries, they will start interacting. Oh, we have to make our uncle happy. It's their friend. What will he think if we don't interact? Come on, let's interact for him and so on. Slowly, they'll warm up and start interacting well. But the seed has to be planted first and you will see it, uh, you know, work its magic over a period of time. For kids, it takes a little bit of time, but it will work. You have to plant the seeds and give them the positive reinforcement. Let's say after this exercise, they've met the person well. After the, you know, meeting or get together is over, you have to thank and praise the kids that you've done a very good job. That's called positive reinforcement about this. And you should say that I got a call from your uncle. He's also very happy that you met and spoke to their friend like this. This setup, no? do this for a few more times. By a habit, they will start interacting. Well. But you have to take the first step by giving them this little, a little story about uh, uh, involving their favorite person. Then only kids get interested. Kids need that enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Anything else about you? Do you have any situation where you felt a block? Something is like, you know, not 100% which you would like to overcome. It can be a, a personal situation or, or something in career or, you know, some goal was not met. You feel any block was weighing down and preventing you from uh, attaining it. Actually, regarding my uh, personal, uh, in terms of professional career, mm -hmm. I'm doing planning, but the execution is a bit hard for me many times, actually. Okay. So, so actually, you're, you're, for your professional part, what exactly are you uh, doing, Feroz? Uh, actually, I'm project manager in Flex, uh, in the same company with Abrar. Uh, since last three, three and a half years, I'm working as a project manager. Before that, I was a, a team leader in a quality function. Okay. So you make the plans, you make the strategies, and during execution, uh, do you find that there's a, there's a block coming from you or... Is it that uh, the team is not performing? Is the block over there? So we have to identify the source. Only then we can fix it. Where do you see it uh, stalling? Where do you see the block coming from? Uh, uh, not in terms of team, but uh, suppose uh, suppose I am uh, planning to do for myself as a, for example, I have to do <clears throat> certification course. I am putting oh. it on paper. I am I am preparing for that. I am even I am I am doing this online research and all those things. Oh. 
but okay. when it comes sexual uh, execution for example uh, like uh, getting enrolled in uh, like uh, some organization where the certifications are providing so i am yeah. stuck in there I, I have like fear that uh, maybe i cannot uh, like got this certification by many reasons like that okay so in terms of are there any exams or tests for you to do to get the certification are you having a block in that Yes, yes, sir. Right now, if I, I if I speak about this PMP certification, I am planning to do. But I I did everything everything like planning how to do when to do. Even I was going through these videos and uh, all these yeah. training materials. But when it comes real to enroll in this PMI uh, organization and then exam, I am a bit worried. Ki, uh, will i uh, able to crack, uh, crack this exam or not that that is a fear okay. in my mind fear that if you do this and you won't crack the exam so because of that you're yeah, not yeah. actually finish filing your application you can, and you getting can, it. like uh, okay. fear of failure i i putting my efforts i'm doing but i am i have like always fear of failure always so, so how we will address is uh, have you failed before in any exam in your school level in your 9th 10th level 12th have you no, failed in any exam? Till engineering, I, I don't fail any exam actually. Okay. And in engineering, were you having trouble with any paper? And did you have any failure or you had any error or something in any paper? No, no. At, at the beginning, I had like bad career start. So that was the starting point of my this fear actually. But uh, in, during but my education, I never never failed in any subject. I would like to you didn't say. Fail, but in the early part of career, you had some issues. So uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Was that uh, what was that career about coding or quality? Was that about the programming quality, quality control quality? I started with quality itself, quality certification. Okay, and in that uh, failure, in the sense that the company was not good, so you were upset about that, or uh, did they not keep their promise? How exactly can you go into a little bit of detail? Uh, sorry, sorry, I didn't get you actually. I, I uh, lost a lot of some... why you consider that a failure was, was it because the company failed to live up to your expectations or did they not keep any promise or did they give you a, a project which you could not handle if you could elaborate a little bit on that you don't have to name the company just to elaborate no, 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 not, not like not like that but when when i i am saying when it starts uh, when i started or i passed out from engineering uh, i mm. i didn't get good job and then i struggled to get job and uh, from okay. that point only i i had like a fear of failure in my mind actually so because I'm trying to relate that fear of uh, failure with the uh, certification course because uh, there is a little bit of a disconnect here. When, when you clear your engineering and you uh, don't get a job, the fear of failure comes because we are worried about being judged by our peer group. Let's say your classmates got a good job, uh, some relatives got a good job and you did not get, then the fear of getting judged plays into a subconscious. And uh, that's a big block on its own. Now that you're in a good career, uh, what's happening is you have a fear of not clearing the certification. The only way this is connecting to your earlier fear is if you let others be aware that you're doing this. Okay. If this were to be a secret project, just imagine for a second that nobody in your circle knows that you're going to attempt the certification. Can you just close your eyes for a moment and just imagine? Uh, let's not think about PMP certification. Okay. Let's just think mm -hmm. of something totally, completely different. Uh, not related to your career itself, but it's still a certification. Uh, do you know about scuba diving? Yes, yes, I know. Yes. Do you know that in any place you go scuba diving, whether it's Maldives or whether it's Andaman or Lakshadweep, after you do scuba diving, you can choose to be certified in that. Okay. In that, you have to spend a few hours putting that device, putting it off, breathing with it, breathing out, and then, you know, having certain time spent diving and coming out. Once you do that, you can actually be certified as a certified scuba diver and later as a certified scuba instructor for example now let's mm -hmm. say you go to maldives just like that you don't tell anyone for three days you just go to maldives you hire a boat you hire a scuba diving instructor and you know you've done your swimming practice and and here you you have the you know protective gear no one's going to drown in a scuba diving thing so let's say you do this and you get certified whether you choose to or not will anyone else know that you're doing this for example nobody's going to know it's between you and the instructor correct mm -hmm. And the company so it's going to be a secret how do you feel about getting certified about this in a scuba diving thing? will you have anxiety about this you're not sharing it with anyone it's just you the instructor and maybe some other 
total stranger who wants to be certified will you have the same kind of anxiety compared to maybe not getting the first job and because after you cleared your engineering everyone knew am i right everyone knew that you cleared classmates mm-hmm. to your relatives correct here no one's knowing yes. secret you're on a secret mission people think you're just in a maldives beach but you're in the ocean you're wearing the kit you've done your scuba diving you know deciding to get certified or not will you have the same level of anxiety uh maybe maybe this, not maybe not because there's no one to judge you so the point is the root cause of your block is a fear of being judged the fear of being judged that is triggering that anxiety and that is causing the starting trouble in getting ahead with something that is a certifiable entity now coming to the present situation this pmp certification this course and all that what you have to do is first step imagine that nobody on earth knows this except you and the company it's going to be a secret feroz project top secret mission applying for pmp certification nobody should know mm-hmm. once you have that in your mind nobody is knowing this your next step should be imagining your favorite exam in your 10th or 9th or 12th can you tell me one of your favorite exams where you got the highest marks with least effort tell me one subject least effort highest marks not a least effort but 12th was my good good year actually 12th 12th everyone puts a very good effort like in 12th which was your best this paper you got the highest marks maths wonderful i mean person who gets highest mark in maths is like an a class winner you don't have to worry about any entrance test that is much my feeling that's what i've observed in most of my students they do well in 12th maths they ace any test now let's say you do your 12th very well and in this pmp course Now let's say you're getting your PMP exam. It's coming in May, and before that exam, let's say that exam date today is what date? Today is December 18th. Now let's say your test is in January 3rd, 2023, and I want you to close your eyes and imagine this PMP institute where you're secretly trying to get certified. They send you an envelope. You open that envelope, and you see all the questions for the test for January 3rd are given to you. and you find that they were from your 12th easiest maths portion the 12th easiest maths portion is going to be your pmp test and they're giving you in advance how mm. are you feeling seeing that question what do you feel delighted yeah. oh my god i know this definitely definitely i can do this in my sleep i can wake up at 3 am and get 1000 out of 100 in this don't you get that feeling yeah yeah right can you lock i can do this yeah. in my sleep i can do this sleep walking now open your eyes and with that feeling in mind without telling anyone today itself try to apply for the pmp course don't tell him this is your anchor feeling that whatever is the question paper i'll crack it whatever is the syllabus i'll crack it it is just going to be like my 12th maths plus i will get all the questions by the way i think most of the pmp certification question answers they are there in a brain dump or something if i'm not wrong it is available most of the question answers are available so once you just sign up for the course all the these resources will like magic they'll start coming to you question answers projects sample projects ppts all those resources will come to you all you have to do is give yourself a considerable amount of time like 12th we spent 6 7 months studying give yourself 6 months if you're going to give just 2 3 weeks again that's you know time compression give yourself 6 months so it will simulate your 12th type performance 6 months time get all the resources in hand think it's just like maths start cracking it that's it and nobody should know prime thing block is nobody should know don't tell anyone you're doing this it will be helping you focus a lot if you don't tell anyone that fear will just evaporate mm-hmm. and one more secret tip i'll tell you is i know you will clear this pmp test even after you clear it and get certified for some days if anyone asks you you should say i'm thinking of applying after you get it that will totally make the anxiety go away because you're telling others i'm thinking of applying but you've already got the certificate it's there in your bag so subconsciously you're, that's a relief will be there that it's okay whether i share or not i've all, i'm already certified that i am already certified loop also will come to you and that will help you clear future certification anything you choose okay yeah so the fear judgment that anxiety the other fear is the fear of uncertainty will i clear or not all those fears will vanish when you do this visualization step 1 think of your best exam like math step 
think you're already getting that question paper from the institute. Step three, mm -hmm. it's a secret question. Nobody knows you're applying. And that's it. With these three steps, you visualize the scenario, you will succeed. That block will just vanish. You just have to practice this a couple of times and just apply. In fact, after you apply, just study it like before. See the videos and other things. You don't have any, nobody knows you're doing this, so nobody will judge you. Doesn't matter. Got it? How yeah, do you yeah. feel after the possibility coming in your life? Now, do you feel it's possible that this block will erase? Yeah, definitely. De definitely, this will help me actually. It will help. It will help because it's the success anchoring and uh, totally going from a negative judgment situation to a positive, I can do this in my own way situation. As it is like a 12th match and one to one, this is beyond LP. I'm saying if you do well in your 12th match, there is no entrance on planet Earth that you can uh, do badly at. You will succeed. Because the 12th match is the pinnacle of uh, uh, trial and stress for other people. Most people are relieved just clearing it. So if you've had your highest marks in that, you will be successful in it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Absolutely. Abrar, what about you? I just wanted to give that opportunity to Parvez. Maybe I'll circle back uh, later. Uh, yeah. Parvez, any, any questions uh, from your side? Yeah. Uh, you wanted to... Before we uh, go to uh, one more yeah. anchoring, I would like the feedback. Then I can go for the anchoring. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, I'm really sorry. I joined a little bit late to 5 minutes, 10 minutes. But you and the autobiography. Outside. Yes, yes. And, uh, yeah. uh, thank you, Abrabai, for giving this opportunity. Uh, I just planning now. I was in uh, support role function, HR function for the past five years. And uh, growth is, uh, no, we need to be full patient. Okay, growth is not like that. So planning to move to IT, uh, IT field. So I'm learning .NET. Okay, okay. very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Through, through MSK here in Vanyambadi. So the oh. team is uh, uh, doing good job. In the mass every Saturday and uh, Sunday, the trainer is coming at 10 to 1 o'clock he's taking. So probably this month it will be end. once it is and once I hands free the, all the codes and the programming, I will uh, try to give the interview i have uh, fear that uh, totally i was in five years in uh, hr field uh, whether this uh, opportunity will uh, get or not that fear okay. is there so how to uh, boost, okay. uh, this, this is a very classic idea. situation where you're trying to uh, shift I'll, the... i'd like to pause the yeah. timing for the zoom is just one minute we can yeah. reconnect okay. and then we can yeah. go to your answer. Yes, yes, yes. We'll that, that is a better one. And we'll, we'll just end yes, the call yes. and then rejoin again. That's a yeah. good one. You, you just do yeah. that. Abra, you yeah. end the call with we'll then. Sure, sure, sure. I'll we'll do that. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah, please uh, go on, Parvis. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, um, first, first of all, I would like to point out that from what I recall, Mr. Parvis, in our previous meeting to now, I'm personally seeing a noticeable change in his body language itself. So he's done the autobiography exercise properly and it has created a subconscious change and he's smiling more, his posture is better and he looks more confident overall. You can yourself see your old video and compare Parvez. The first time we had a session and now. Yes, sir, of course. I'm seeing a noticeable change. In fact, if anyone objectively compares today's recording with earlier when you had, they will see the change. In fact, you're a wonderful case study of what happens when one sincerely does the autobiography exercise. You get that inner confidence and it will be the lifelong. Nobody can take it away from you. Okay, number one. Second, now coming to uh, this career change uh, stress situation. Without NLP itself, logically, let me tell you that because you've been in HR, you automatically become a very valuable asset in whatever field you go because the other HR will know your value. It, this guy has been there. He knows what the company wants. He knows the nitty gritty of what is expected from other employees. And he'll pass on the seriousness to whichever department he's in. Because he knows the language of the HR, the connect, the importance of, you know, the hours to be done, the, the commitments, the rules and all that. Because you know it all. So there's, yes. there's very less stress for them when you are on board. Because you know the stuff. They don't have to teach policy to you. 
Am I right? So yes, in, in your own case, yes. if you're going to hire someone in your company who's ex-HR and now into something else, you will be subconsciously very, very comfortable with them because you'll speak the same language. Like whatever the HR rules, HR policies, you'll discuss about oh, this company and this policy, this company and that policy. You will be having a strong rapport from the get-go. Okay. The interview-wise, the only question where there'll be hitches, are you have been in HR, why do you want to shift to technical? That is going to be the main uh, question framework that you have to uh, get over. And uh, as part of my interview training, and you also will be knowing this probably better than me, you have a STAR method, correct? Situation, task, action, and result. You have that uh, four steps to where you answer a question. So it's very easy for you to formulate in this. That you can say very, you can uh, you, you can also use the NLP technique of reframing, saying that because I have already been in HR, this, 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 that, and I have decided that my more uh, talent is coming in from technicals, I will be able to implement the technologies better knowing the needs of my company better. You have that trump card with you. I know what the company needs because I've already been a HR. So this confidence will come in the interview whenever you take it. But this is the non-NLP part. I'm just telling you logically. Now the NLP part, what are you going to do to get over the stress? Here what I would recommend is a quick scenario visualization. Okay. For you, I want to think of one of your best interviews ever. You would have given interviews to get a job, correct? For your first job, second job, or for appraisal and so on. Do you recall any interview that was your best interview? That everything went well, all the questions were answered well. Uh, anything like that, can you share? Yes, sir. In Wipro itself, uh, when I have joined for HR as a contract in 2017, okay. so general manager has uh, taken my interview. Yeah. He asked for about to introduce yourself and uh, yeah. you are from which college you have studied, yeah. which is your. Uh, most like uh, subject called uh, which subject you will be good in uh, area yeah. of that subject uh, he asked yeah. and then he asked to write uh, excel formulas we'll look up they, do that. they will do that now yeah. now you see the way you're remembering this with a lot of uh, accuracy so it was a very good confidence boosting experience if i'm not wrong you, you may even know the excel questions that he asked because you answered them when you got the job correct now imagine for a moment, you know, imagine for a moment that this interview you've done, you've done very well. Now go back to that interview time. You there was a door, you opened the door and you went in and you shook hands and it started, correct? Yes, sir. Am I right? Now yes. imagine before you opened the door, someone in Wipro stopped you and said, Mr. Parvez, I have a letter for you. Imagine you're opening the letter, and in that letter is your appointment letter. Before the interview itself. Imagine the appointment letter is there and he tells you, Parvez sir, you're already hired, but due to formality, you still have to go to the interview here. Okay. Now you're entering that interview. It's already your favorite interview. You've already got a job and you're answering questions. How do you feel now? Totally it's relieved. Very excitement. Yes, of course, sir. I've already got a job. I can answer anything. And yet you still answer well. And yet the other person is very happy with you. This is your scenario visualization. Before any other interview you go to, you have to imagine that you've already got the job. It doesn't matter how you perform. You're already in there and you've already done a very good interview and you're doing this as a trial for the next interview, just for helping them practice their interview setting. You're a HR, you know. You're helping the other HRs get their HR work right. Get this visualization and do it. Inshallah, you will do fantastically well. Of course, you have to do the Inshallah. other prep also. The, coding .net. again the brain dumps are there the interview questions are there they'll ask you simple codes you're a, you know as a hr you know what to expect so you prepare well go for this visualization and enter you will click you will rock it shall okay thank you so this is the advantage of nlp visualizations even as i was discussing this i could see the smile the confidence and the sudden exuberance that comes these are your positive mm -hmm. submodalities you have to develop them more and more with every successful episode and on that note, for all of you, for Abrar, Parvez, for Anjum and Firoz, I would like to give a anchoring exercise, which is the second application of NLP. What is an anchor? An anchor is a simple gesture that you make to reinforce your confidence. You, you would have had many successful uh, episodes in life, successful situations, uh, where you have won prizes or got very good results and all that. So any successful situation you can imagine, 
and when you're imagining that i want you to make a simple hand gesture for for most for in my case i do this i clasp my hands like this before for recalling a positive thing i just clasp my hands like this and i do a simple snap my fingers like this magicians will snap their fingers like this just one two three and they'll do it there are athletes you know in wrestling and all they touch their shoulder like this like this and then they do it some people will touch the ground that is their anchor some people will do like this and go that's their anchor some people will just clap their hands three times that's their anchor you decide some people will just press their thumb like this or just press their thumb like this or you know do like this once your wish make any gesture you want think of it with your best experience and next time you just do that gesture that positive feeling will come you have to do this say 10 15 times so the moment you do that gesture the positive feeling should come whether it's you snap your finger or you clasp like this or you clasp like this or just you know touch your heart like this one two three okay you're ready now well, there are some people who are in sports they will just jump up and down three times with their bat for cricket or something it's like they before they got get on to the pitch they do that it's their anchoring they they imagine their best century or double century they do this and they start playing better than before so this is a very important step called anchoring i i heartily recommend that you do this with your uh, best experiences and in a very shortcut you can get into the positive feeling when you do the anchoring okay okay so uh, furthermore notes for this required i'll just prepare and send to abrar any other questions you have regarding anchoring you can uh, share it feroz anjum anything you, you want to share regarding anchoring like in anjum's case you can anchor like the, your best successful uh, contract that you got when you recall that you can anchor a gesture and before the next meeting you think of that gesture automatically that feeling will come the positive visualization will come sure same for uh, feroz in what i say imagine seeing your 12th mark sheet with that memory you can think of something like just you know make a simple uh, snap of your fingers or something like that you can just make your own gesture for that immediately that feeling will come next time you just do the gesture that's the power of anchoring so one solid positive signal you have for motivating you on the spot okay yeah sure sure so bro this is the crux of our uh, discussion today anything you would like to add yeah only uh, one or two questions from my side and uh, yeah sometimes uh, while giving the presentations uh, we have to outline so many facts figures and all that and some figures uh, may be coming from the standards uh, that does not have too much logical reason why it is so and all that and in that cases uh, you know but somehow as a presenter as a trainer you have to convey that point for example i'm talking yeah. about measurement system analysis has has a technicality yeah. has a technical rules and yeah. so on and so forth maybe logical yeah. may not be logical and all that right the set rules yeah. uh, in some cases actually yeah. like uh, i think i was just going back to i was just noticing parvez actually uh, yeah. uh, back in 20 2017 still he is able 20. to remember that events everything yeah. right so how yeah. we should convert such a pivotal points and uh, values yeah. as a event and how we can deliver the impactful presentation so that okay when we think of msa okay these are all the things you know uh, yeah. have to be remember you know uh, like in the events and all that so that that for for, for this the scenario the scenario visualization has to be of importance like only when you feel something is extremely important and will fetch a reward only then the enthusiasm comes enthusiasm is linked to reward that's a human nature two things one either there should be a fear of uh, something that if you don't do this it will not be good that is a negative side the positive side is if you do this it's going to be absolutely amazing so you have to connect a reward memory with this a uh, presentation present moment only then you will be able to give the enthusiasm otherwise it will become routine monotonous and you yourself will not be enthused so what reward can you connect to this whether it's real or imagined what will be giving you the most motivation as a reward you have to imagine that and do this like for instance those who listen to this will they get an uh, increment example can they do that if they learn all these steps and if they were to tell their seniors that hey i've learned these steps from abrar imagine them immediately getting an increment after giving that fact so won't you feel happy hey because of me because i gave this msa they all got an increment here so that kind of situation will motivate you to give your best you have to imagine it some reward situation that's the best uh, uh, anchor that i can give for this
perfect perfect uh, one one last question from my side uh, you know yeah. it is always says uh, said that you know we have to be positive even though if you're not doing well and something you have to tell with a good energy that okay i'm doing great yeah. and uh, though you you go through a pain you go through a fever yeah. you you just yeah. in every situation you you just yeah. uh, portray the best uh, the possible uh, you can right and sometime actually yeah. when you just uh, Uh, hear from other actually i'm not doing well always uh, complaining about yeah. the situations yeah. and uh, yeah. how we should motivate them and at the same time how we should not get uh, deceived from that uh, insect right so how we should be positive oh. frame of oh, mind the, and the, how the we should earlier exercise okay. we had given. we had given an earlier exercise called dissociation every okay. time someone comes up to you with a sad story example you have to mentally dissociate from that event you have to start seeing it like a movie and imagine you're taking notes oh some is coming here oh, bro i felt very bad today i had a terrible experience immediately in your mind you should you know step out and okay observe his body language he is having a sad story why what is his body language is there anything i can do mentally you should start taking notes like that then what will happen is his negative energy will not affect you if you start associating you also will feel down okay okay every time someone is positive you can associate you will also lift your spirits but the negative dissociate it's a movie yeah. you're seeing on screen or oh, it's a great act nice portrayal what can be done let it be like a puzzle you should start thinking it like a movie that's a step for helping yourself you know shielding us it's a shield one next you say how to motivate that person for that you have to actually once he's done you have to make them see the situation like a movie and say look you are my friend i want to help you genuinely but it can work only if you follow these these steps why don't you go through your situation and write down five things you learned from it initially they'll be taken aback hey everything is bad why are you asking me to learn from it again you should tell them as a friend i'm advising you anything you can learn from it just write down why don't you observe this as a movie you give them that same dissociation point and the moment they start observing it like a life lesson and they start writing down points their negative energy inside will come down because the human psychology is that when you observe without any uh, associated state your feelings will be you know not associated with that negative side and it will be objective the dissociation brings down the anxiety dissociation brings down emotional suffering and all that automatically after this exercise they themselves will feel little relief oh okay it was bad but i learned something from this and trust me that thank you for this thank you so you much. have to make them write down the things they learned okay yeah yeah sure sure but, uh, but one question but step one you have to shield yourself step one is you have to shield yourself with this dissociation yeah. otherwise you yourself feel upset that you can't help <laughs> yeah it, that feeling will get influence here yeah. very true yeah so one question i received from uh, uh, one of uh, the lady uh, mother i yeah. uh, wanted to yeah. say that uh, i'm just always giving the best picture to my children and i want yeah. them to perceive uh, the educations i want them to excel in their career and all that uh, yeah. but i don't see i don't think that they are taking things very uh, seriously and uh, one thing which i noticed was uh, too much emphasis been done and uh, nothing else no pricing was done every every time study study and all that so Uh, what best advice you have for uh, such mothers or parents see yeah, if i'm uh, understanding this right they are putting too much emphasis only on studies yes. and they're not seeing the uh, the results see this is this goes beyond nlp this goes into child psychology uh, in nlp there is one clue it's called a pattern interrupt where you keep on doing the same thing it becomes monotonous then the body goes into an autopilot mode so they start losing interest so you have to interrupt that pattern by suddenly giving them something totally not connected to studies like take them to play bowling or table tennis or a cricket match or take them for a quick surprise holiday in a weekend to a beach or to a hill station they should not expect it it should be sudden and at that time the only focus should be on that event and not on their studies or something like that after that when they again come back and hit their studies there will be a renewed sense of energy because the pattern has been interrupted now the brain is having some capacity to again start the work In fact, I will share right now. My son is having a maths exam tomorrow. Yet I am asking him, "Hey, you should watch the World Cup at least one half in the final." I am interrupting his study practice for ten hours. That boy has been studying. <laughs> so, yeah. otherwise he will get bored, and, and he may not perform well if only the same thing is going on like a monotony. Okay. Yeah. So this is one thing I would recommend to work. It will work. 
because that old saying is that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. A little bit of one or two hours of some totally disconnected uh, uh, pattern interrupt exercise will help them out. And oh, it should sure. be done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, and, I uh, will also advise my younger brother to come and we will play her game for half an hour. True. Something, something, something to interrupt the pattern of otherwise the, the body goes into autopilot. When we go into autopilot, we will not improve. We will only carry on doing the same thing in a boring way and that energy will be sapping. Something different to lighten up and you know, and when we do that and come back to the work, we will have a renewed sense of energy. We may even solve a problem which is in our mind and we are not getting an answer if we interrupt the pattern for some time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to circle back to Anjum and Firoj and Parvez. Do you have any other questions, follow up questions uh, to Mr. Tamim, sir? Uh, no problem. It is, it is better yeah, than I will reach out to you personally. Yeah, sure. please, please, most, most welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah nothing. Yeah, from yeah. Yeah. yeah, please go on, uh, Firoj or Anjum. Yeah, please go. Yeah, yeah not, nothing, nothing from my side also. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm good. If anything Wonderful. is there, I'll uh, jot it down for uh, our next session if possible. Sure, sure, sure. You can sure. also reach out to uh, Abra. You can also reach out to Abra. If anything, if there's any custom visualization I can write down and send, I will do that. Perfect, perfect. For you or for your team members, anything we will uh, support. Okay. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so Excellent. much. Thank, uh, so thank you any... all. Thank yeah. All. Yeah. So once again, uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, and uh, of course, we learned something called fast phobia and fast uh, visual effects and all that. We really enjoyed yeah. the sessions. And I'm sure that uh, Firoj from Pune and uh, Anjum from Bangalore and uh, Parvez would have, must have enjoyed the same uh, way I have enjoyed the, throughout the sessions. And once again, thank you so much. Uh, may Almighty accept all your efforts and may you uh, have a healthy and blissful uh, uh, life. Yeah. Thank you, Brabe. Thank you all. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Brabe. And thank you, Tamim. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank yeah. you all. Bye. Thanks. Thank Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Anjum. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye.